Ray, in closing, and then we're going to take a couple questions uh, from the group here. I wanted to ask about your own family. So as I reflect um, over the last 50 years, there was only one out of over 3,000 companies I financed where the CEO told me he was in it for the money. And wealth was really a byproduct of what they built and their passion for what they built. And we all know that it's very difficult for second and third generations and fourth generations where a first generation has been very successful, particularly financially, like herself. You have four sons. What are you thinking about for those four sons and your three grandchildren, I think, at the moment? Uh, and if you're thinking, I always think about, OK, what's your legacy? What's happening with your children? What's happening with your grandchildren? And I know so many, and I'm sure you do, successful people where all they've had is service with their children or grandchildren as a byproduct of their own success and the way they live their life. How do you view that? Well, I, I, w I was very lucky, in, and my family, I guess, was lucky in that we, you know, so we didn't have anything. And then as we accumulated this, they, like me, experienced uh, each one of the stages of going from essentially nothing to more. And they, so they know, actually know what the difference is. Um, we didn't come in with this and by experiencing that. So they- Your grandchildren might not have had that. No, my, I'm saying it's an, it could be, a, it certainly could be an issue for the grandchildren. Um, but by experiencing that, I mean, and also n knowing what, you know, what you value somehow gets carried along to them in terms of like what you value. I, I remember when we renovated a, a, a kitchen and, and the kitchen had to uh, be closed down and we had to go into this little room that, with a hot plate and everybody. We reminisce about how the dinners were great in that hot plate and so on. So you, you can know, you went to Maslow's Laws and you can know as you go up there what matters. You know, you've got to if you got a bed and sleep in and you got good food and you got good relationships, okay? Safety, belonging, community, that's been, you touched on it. Uh, community is the greatest source of happiness. This isn't me saying this, this is numerous studies and there's not much correlation, there's no correlation past a certain basic level of income, amount of money and happiness. So we know those things, we experience those things, and I'm lucky in a sense that my kids have done that. And then the thing I want to give my kids more than anything, and those grandkids, is self-sufficiency. In other words, you could have any life you want to choose, but you've got to be self-sufficient and, and you be strong and I've provided them, I don't know, with a lot of tough love and they understand the concept of tough love. So that's been, but it's definitely an issue, right? The, the problem of having too much money, we've talked about this, the, 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 uh, the problem of having too much money in many cases is much more than the problem of having too little money. It depends where you are, right? Community, relationships. And it's the greatest reward, a greatest, I think, source of happiness. And so knowing that, but people can become addicted to these things, and, and you have to be very careful about that. My, you know, we still, you know, fly commercially, almost generally speaking. My wife is like this. We get in the habit of these things, because, and the kids are like that. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a big issue, and uh, it's important uh, to, um, experience that and not my grandkids but I think I'm lucky in that my kids themselves get this and like um, they they're more in many cases more austere than I am uh, I, I won't get into all that but um, it's an important issue yeah